All right. Okay. So hello, dears. So welcome to the continuation no, of our lecture on parasites and fecal smears. And still on nematodes, because there are a lot And again, um, very common, yun. very common to um, uh, isolate from your stool samples, especially when we have our classes in normal face-to-face -face setting as in. Very common. That's why we're devoting much of our time here in nematodes. All right. And continuing, um, we have here your Trichuris trichura, of course. Uh, common name is your whip worm because it looks like a whip. Next, you have, again, infective stage, embryonated egg. Diagnostic stage of ova. Ova found in stool. Motor transmission, ingestion pa rin of embryonated egg, fecal oral. And the diseases, trichuriasis and rectal prolapse. Ayan, so we have a picture on that later. And the eggs, again, described as barrel-shaped or football-shaped. Some describe it as lemon-shaped then. Lemon-shaped. All right. Okay. All right. With bipolar, meaning both ends, with bipolar mucus plugs. All right. Another description, it resembles now a Japanese lantern. And aside from that, it's bile stained. So same with, um, with uh, Ascaris. Okay. And color niya is golden brown pa rin because of the bile stain. It's bile stain. Okay, now for Trichuris, as you can see, it's quite similar tanan tanan <laughs> with uh, Ascaris in terms of its infective stage, mode of transmission, diba? That is why Ascaris and Trichuris usually they come together because they have the same life, uh, they have the same mode of transmission and infective stage pa rin. Okay, all right, and this is the life cycle of Trichuris, as you can see, still the same with Ascaris. It's mode of transmission, fecal oral, all right? Ingestion of embryonated egg, still the same, embryonated egg. All right, and again, uh, appearance of the egg, football shape with this one, bipolar mucus plugs. Okay, prominent. Okay, so as you can see, protruded jun like ng gawas siya, prominent. Okay, uh, bipolar mucus plugs, and it resembles a ayan, Japanese lantern. Okay, and this is what we call a rectal prolapse. So this is in heavy infection of trichuris. Um, that's also kaning rectal prolapse. Uh, when we talk about trichuris, mupo ng first thing musulud sa kung mind, rectal prolapse. <laughs> because it's usually observed ang rectal prolapse in trichuris infection. So, what happens, rectal prolapse, a part of your rectum, no, in your rectum, in your large intestine, a part of it goes out of your anus, okay, because of heavy infection. So, a part of your rectum goes out, okay, of your anus. Rectal prolapse. When you say prolapse, na naog, okay, All right, or it goes out. All right, because again of heavy infection. Okay, so common in mga children. All right, and again, rectal prolapse usually trichuris yun na ko na siya associate. So when someone mentions rectal prolapse, the first parasite that comes to mind for me is trichuris. Okay, so yan ay connections, association. Yes, all right, so that's trichuris trichura. Okay, all right, so again, football shaped egg, bipolar mucus plugs. Okay. Now, the next parasite is something that I think wala na ko na, na introduce sa ang virtual microscope activity. And this is your Capillaria philippinensis. Ayan, sir. Hala, philippinensis. Galing ba to sa Philippines? Yes. <laughs> okay, press the buzzer. Yes. It was discovered in the Philippines in 1963. Ayan, 1963 by Dr. Nilia P. Salazar. Ayan. The Salazar, Salazar family, four sisters. Anyway, all right, so Capillaria philippinensis, ayan, by the name itself. So proud to be Pinoy, guys. I ain't Pisoy, I'm Pinoy. So yeah, it was discovered in the Philippines in 1963 in Ilocos Sur. Ayan, Ilocos Sur. Okay, Ilocos Sur. Okay. Uh, I think sa lecture ni Ma'am Bernal, ingon siya 1964. So, I think 1963 to 1964. So, muna siya mga years na discover. Common name is Pudok Worm or Mystery Worm. Ayan. So, because it was discovered in Pudok, Ilocos Sur. Ayan. So, it's a place in Ilocos Sur. Um, infective stage now is the filariform larva. Di ba, recall? Sa, uh, the type of larva, L1, L3. So, it's filariform larva. Diagnostic stage could be larva and or ova found in the stool. And the, it now has an intermediate host. Ayan. So what do you mean by intermediate host? It's the host that harbors the asexual stage, no? the larval stage of your parasite. So what's the intermediate host? Freshwater fish or brackish water fishes. Okay. You have example, ipon, birot, bagsang, gapi. Okay. And these are your ipon fish, diba? As in, like while I was searching, I na before. <laughs> okay. 
But I think same families lang with the tugnos or diles. Or maybe this is tugnos talaga. But ipon lang ang tawag sa ilokosur na fish. Okay, so yes. Mode of transmission is, of course, ingestion of the fish that contains the larva of undercooked or raw. Okay? And true definitive host are the migratory birds or man. Uh, akong gislash ang man, it's because uh, there have been sources, conflicting as sources, some say that the definitive hosts are birds, okay, and man are accidental hosts, but pwede din daw na ang man ang true definitive host, alright? So, because the entire life cycle of capillaria is not well known, okay? It's still under study. Based ako mga readings. Alright. And the eggs are flattened by polar mucus plugs, striated and smaller than trichuris. So, they have a same, same appearance of the eggs of trichuris, but its shape is guitar or peanut shape, and it's a close, sorry, a close relative of your, uh, a close relative of your trichuris, okay? And it causes steatoria. Asa man ito na na-mention ng steatoria na word, be? Asa man, press the buzzer. Asa na protozoa? Kay Jarja. Ayan, so si Jarja and si Capillaria, they causes, they cause uh, steatoria. So, meaning increased fats in your stool. Okay. Alright. Now, sige, sige. Alright. So, again, this is the egg of Capillaria philippinensis. As you can see, it's quite the same good with the egg of um, Trichuris, diba? But, as you can see, mas less protruded, okay? Meaning, mas less nanigawas, okay? Less protruded ang um, bipolar plugs, okay? And as you can see, it's much more uh, wider, okay? It's wider. Para siyang uh, guitar or peanut shape. Yeah, some describe it as that. Alright, okay, that's for the egg of Capillaria philippinensis. Again, still the same appearance with Trichuris. Alright, close relative of, excuse me, Trichuris. Okay, now we go now to your, uh, you may be wondering, why is it called mystery worm? Because in Ilocos before, in 1963, 1964, there was a disease that um, threatened the people there and they don't know what's the cause of the disease. Okay, so, uh, symptoms, what, mga diarrhea, abdominal cramps, you know, uh, presentation niya is gastro, gastrointestinal, alright? So, but they don't know the cause of the disease. And then, Dr. Nelia P. Salazar, okay, discovered that. And um, because of that disease, they term, uh, because they don't know the origin or the cause of the disease, that's why they term it as mystery disease, okay? But after, um, <laughs> after Dr. Nelia P. Salazar discovered capillaria, Okay, she named it, or it was named now, Pudok Worm slash the Mystery Worm. Because again, uh, it, it caused the mystery disease. Okay, so that's the history of it. Alright, okay, ayan. Alright, now we go now to the life cycle of capillaria. So I think this is the first nematode that uh, its, its mode of transmission is ingestion of the larva. Okay, not the egg. Okay, now for capillaria, of course, again, the mode of transmission is ingestion of the fish, okay, undercooked or raw that contains the larva. Okay, now your humans, if infected with capillaria, of course, it defecates, no, na malibang, all right? And then once the eggs or the stool goes into the water there, so, of course, the eggs hatch, okay, and the, the eggs or the larva is eaten by the fish, okay, by your fish, kato mga fish, freshwater fish, brackish fish, kato ipon, bagtang, bagsa, whatever. Alright. Now, your humans, they ingest the raw or undercooked fish that contains the larva. Now, once the fish is digested, the larva is released, okay, and the larva grows into the adults and then produce the eggs and whatever. Alright. Now, why is it discovered in Ilocos Sur? Because in Ilocos Sur pala, they are fond of eating kato na mga fish, kato ipon, bagsang, bagtang, whatever. <laughs> they like to eat that raw. Okay. So, they like to, they have a dish there, parang they have a delicacy they have a parang basa dish known in Ilocos Sur that is that eats raw raw na mga fish kato na mga fish okay so that's why they can have that's why it's it was discovered in Ilocos Sur Capillaria philippinensis okay that's why philippinensis yes woo proud to be Pinoy chat <laughs> natay parasite okay all right ayan okay all right so that's generally the life cycle of your capillaria philippinensis i included it because it has the same appearance with your Trichuris. And aside from that, it can also be retrieved from your stool. I've experienced that when I in, went to internship sa Galiaras. Yeah, they retrieved capillaria in a stool sample. So at least, you know. But sa look lang at the shape. Trichuris could be like this. Your capillaria is quite parang ganun. Ay. 
trachea. Parang mas wider siya, your capillary compared sa trichuris. But both contains the mucus plugs. Alright? Okay, mas claro ang mucus plug sa trichuris, mas prominent compared sa mucus plug sa capillary. Alright. Okay, so that's for <laughs> your capillary philippinensis. Okay, alright. Continuing now, we have your hookworms. Ayan, by the name itself, hookworms. Okay, so we have two major species, important species. You have the Nectar americanus, or also known as your New World hookworm, and Ancelostoma duodenali, or the Old Worm, hook, Old World hookworm. So how do I remember? Kung sino yung letter N, Nectar sa din ang New World. O, di ba? So therefore, ang Ancelostoma, siya na ang old, word, old World. Okay? So N, N. Ayan, sige. Mga mnemonics konti dyan. Alright, okay. Ayan. So, infective stage now, still the same with capillaria, the L3 or the filariform larva. Diagnostic stage could be the larva and or ova found in the stool. And the mode of transmission is different, again, it's skin penetration. So I've mentioned that in your, in our activity in virtual microscope, di ba? Skin penetration, direct uh, penetration, especially if unprotected feet sa tiil. So, kana mag tiniil, you walk barefooted, no? Ganun. All right. Larva exhibit still the same heart to lung migration. And we have animal hookworms, Ancelostoma caninum for dog, and Ancelostoma uh, uh, brasiliense for the cat. They exhibit what we call your creeping eruptions or cutaneous larva migrants. So, meaning the larva, there, they move okay, cutaneously. So, that's why makita siya sa skin. All right? So, the larva moves under your skin. And that's itchy, I think, and that's painful ata. All right? Ayan. So, ang Ancelostoma caninum, Ancelostoma brasiliense, they, they exhibit cutaneous larva migrants. When you say cutaneous skin, larva, migrants, moving. So, the larva moves under your skin. Okay? All right. Ayan. Um, in contrast, you have, di ba, cutaneous. We also have visceral. Ayan. Visceral larva migrants. Oh, visceral larva migrants or VLM. Now, this is caused now by your Toxocara. Okay? Toxocara SPP. Okay. That's um, your, this is the Ascaris of the dog or cat. Okay? Toxocara. So, they cause larval migrants, visceral, so meaning inside. So, how do I remember? Diba si Vice ganda? Na siya kanta na boom karakaraka. <laughs> Diba? So, vice, visceral, visceral, vice, boom, kara, karaka, toxocara. O, diba? Vice, <laughs> visceral, toxocara, boom, kara, karaka. Okay? So, ang cutaneous larva migrants, ancelostoma, caninum, ancelostoma, duodenale, ah, brasiliense. Okay? Alright, so, the different types of larva migrants. Cutaneous, meaning sa skin, visceral, kaysa inside. Okay? Alright, so, just additional info. Very advanced na kayo, guys. Diba? Maka-answer mo ni sa lecture. I'm so happy. Sana naman. Alright, okay. Ayan. And then, aside from that, your adult hookworms, they cause ground itch. So, when you say ground itch, katul, imuhang tiil, because of the penetration of the larva. And aside from that, the adult hookworms can cause iron deficiency anemia. Because ang hookworms, ilahang larva, they have teeth. Okay? So, mu mukhaon sila sa imuhang intestines. Alright? So, pag pagkaon nila, ana, it can cause, uh, in a way, bleeding then, alright? So, it can cause anemia. Aside sa different pathogenesis niya, <laughs> or pathophysiology, it can cause IDA, or iron deficiency anemia. Okay? Alright. And eggs, they are the same for all species. That's why I mentioned, we cannot distinguish the two species of um, hookworm through eggs lang. We need to look at the larva, we need to look at the adults. Alright, so it's ovoid, thin-shelled, colorless. Okay, ayan. So, ayan. So, this is called a morula ball uh, formation. So, these are the um, blastomeres. So, mara siya, kanang ka sa cell division natin, no? like kanang sa pagtubo sa baby, sa embryo until that, no? from a cell. So, these are divisions, cell divisions, padulong na to the embryo. Alright? So, again, 2 to 8. Pwede siyang 2 to 8 blastomeres. Alright? So, this is a hookworm egg. Again, once you encounter this in our fecal smears, all right, we report that as hookworm SPP or hookworm egg scene. Okay, we don't speciate. We don't say, ah, Nekator Americanos, ah, Ancelostoma duodenale. No, we just say hookworm. Because again, we cannot distinguish the two species through egg alone. Okay, all right. Ayan. So that's for hookworms. Okay, now for the, again, life cycle, very common, very 
straightforward. Eggs are um, hatched on the soil, all right? So it starts first as an L1 or rabditiform larva and then develops into the filariform in the environment and it kind of barefoot ka, yes, penetrates the skin and then it causes now infection. All right, now don't be, um, uh, we have a different lecture any later. Um, there are different or specific activities for hookworm also later, later, in the part, later, later part of the stem. Okay, all right, that's for hookworm. Now the next one, again, another uh, nematode na I think karon pa na ako na introduce is your strongyloides stercoralis. Now, they are very much close related to your hookworm, all right? Okay, as you can see, common name is your threadworm because its appearance is, looks like a thread, so very thin, no? Um, infective stage, still the same with your um, <coughs> hookworm, the filariform larva. Diagnostic stage are your larva this time, uh, not the ova or not the egg. Uh, mode of transmission is still the same with your hookworm, skin penetration or pwedeng auto-infection. Parthenogenetic, ayan. So, siya ang nematode na parthenogenetic. What do you mean by parthenogenetic? May or may not require a male for reproduction. So, it could be that um, the female itself can produce larva or eggs without the help of a male. That's why we, I, we call Strongy as a strong, independent woman. As a strong, independent woman si Strongy. Nasa pangalan na. Strong siya. Okay? So, may or may I can live with or without a man. Pak ganun. I don't need a man. Parang ganun. Yes! Okay, alright, Char. Okay, so again, it can live with or without a man. Okay. Now, for the eggs, it's rarely seen. But if you see it, indistinguishable siya with, uh, with the hookworm egg. Still the same. It looks like a hookworm egg. But it's much smaller and it always contains the larva. So, ang imo makita sa egg, developing larva na. Delete na to mga balls. <laughs> Katong marula ball. Okay, it could be a larva. It could be egg, then parang larva na yung makita dira. Parang ganun. Okay? Sorry guys. Okay? Alright. Ayan. But again, it's rarely seen. That is why our diagnostic stage for your strongy is the larva. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So, again, larva, it exhibits the heart to lung migration and the diseases, you have the Cochin China diarrhea or your strongyloidiasis, but it can also be free living. So, this is one of the parasites that is known as facultative because it can exist with or without a host, okay? Facultative ang strongy, guys. Facultative parasite, okay? Facultative. Recall pa to mga terms, okay? Facultative, okay? Can live with or without a host. Now, why is it called Cochin China? Because um, in the 1960s, uh, 1870s pala, 18, 1876, uh, there was a disease that was reported in the Indochina region. So, sa mga Vietnam, ganun. So, it was a disease that caused by diarrhea, mga ganun, ganun. And then, later on, they found out that it was caused by strongyloid, strongyloidis. That's why it's called Cochin China diarrhea, okay? Because it was discovered first in the Indochina region before, okay? Alright, ayan. So, this is now its egg, di ba? So, you can see, same ragyun siya with hookworm, alright? But again, slightly smaller and may already contain the larva, alright? And this is now, example, your stercoralis, a strongyloidis, uh, rabditiform larva. So this is what we look usually, or if your patient has strongyloidiasis, usually ang diagnostic stage is the larva, okay, not the egg. Because again, this is rarely seen, okay. All right, now for the life cycle, quite the same, no? Quite the same with your life, uh, with hookworm. So the same, it's skin penetration, all right? But once the eggs are, um, you know, deposited, Ah, okay. So, example, the diagnostic stages is the rabditiform, so it's now already in the stool. It can develop directly to the filariform, okay, if it wants to choose the um, parasitic stage, <laughs> okay. So, still the same filariform penetration. But if it goes into free living, all right, so free living worms, uh, male and female, then they produce the egg, rabditiform larva again, and then finally filariform. It, this root is the free living, so like, no, lives harmoniously, peacefully sa environment. All right? But it can also cause um, auto-infection. When the eggs are, are deposited in the intestinal lumen, it hatches into the rabditiform larva. And the larva penetrates the intestinal mucosa and goes to other organs. Okay? And so, internal auto-infection, meaning ni balik rania ang infection. Okay? All right. Ayan. So, so, rabditiform penetrates into the mucosa, okay, exhibits heart to lung migration. So, from rabditiform, may mo siyang filariform, okay? And then the filariform larva 
then undergoes or goes to the other organs, okay, to cause infection. All right. Okay. Now, that's the end of your nematodes pa lang, guys. Okay? So, before we proceed to the trematodes, again, review lang, konti. So, kinsa na itong mga nag-exhibit ng heart-to-lung migration? Nako, ang saka na itong mnemonic, Anna? Heart-to-lung migration? You have ASH. Silang tulor, ha? Ascaris, Strongy, and Hookworm. Oh my God, wala na din yung ink. <laughs> and last, kinsa itong mga soil-transmitted helmets? Makuha na ito sa soil, you have hats. So, adan na mo siya og tricuris. These are your soil transmitted helminths, meaning makuha na to siya sa soil. All right? And lastly, kinsa tong unholy three gani? Kinsa to tong consider na unholy three? The parasitic triad considered to be na in one specimen pwede sila makuha tanan or you can ob acquire or retrieve the three of them. In one specimen, you have hat. <laughs> Wala na ng S. So, see, uh, without strongina. <laughs> okay? So, silang tulo ang considered ng mga beshies. Okay? Silang tulo. Hat. Alright. So, again, ash, heart to lung migration. The worms that exhibit heart to lung migration. So, from the intestine, no? Penetrates the intestinal mucosa, goes to the liver, portal circulation, and goes now to the heart and lung for it to be oxygenated para mas mo develop siya further. And then goes to the throat, itchy, mukaf ang patient. <laughs> Okay, the larva goes back to the intestine and the larva then develops into adults in the intestine. So, ash, ascaris, trongy, hookworm. Hats are your soil-transmitted helminths. These are the helminths that we can get from soil, okay, because the soil is infected with feces containing the eggs, okay. Hats, hookworm, and the three, okay, and trichuris, adanog trichuris. And unholy three are the parasitic triad, meaning these three eggs can be recovered in one stool specimen, possible, no, most of the time. Magkwerg just lang tulo, that's your hat. Hookworm, ascaris, and trichuris. Okay, so sila mga besties. Alright, ayan, so we're done with the nematodes. Nematodes pa lang, no? Medyo baka TMI na. Sige lang, do it slowly, char. Okay, basin mo dugo. Charot. Okay, alright, we'll now continue uh, in the next videos. Uh, trematodes, your flukes, and then finally the tapeworms, your cestodes. Okay, so I'll see you on the next videos or video. All right. <laughs>